Before I start today's video, I want to give a quick shout out to Rob Dealey who designed the new Screen Fiends logo and did an incredible job. If you want to see his work, you can find a link in the description. He does incredible stuff. I highly recommend him. Hey, what's up guys? Luke here from Screen Fiends and today we're going to have a look at Samurai Jack. So without a doubt, one of my favourite cartoons growing up was Samurai Jack. It was so different to anything out at the time. Unfortunately, the show was finished, well, it was cancelled in 2004, meaning like a lot of people, I was left wondering what happens to our stoic hero on his journey. However, it's taken 13 years, but finally we're going to get that conclusion in an all-new limited series. Let's take a look. Who destroyed everything? Gotta get back. Back. Back to the past. It's a pretty cool trailer, right? So with that trailer out, I thought this is a perfect time to do a top five episodes of Samurai Jack. Now this is my personal top five. Welcome to disagree. Leave some comments below. Don't forget that. And without further ado, let's get into this. At number five, we have A Tale of X9 from series four, episode 11. One of the best episodes of Samurai Jack barely even features our eponymous hero, inspired heavily by neo-noir films like Blade Runner. The episode swapped out the usual black and red colour palette for blue and black and was told through the perspective of a former robot assassin who was implanted with an emotion chip. After growing fond of a small dog, Lulu, sweet thing, he retires only to be forced back into action after his dog is kidnapped by a coup. In exchange for his dog's freedom, X-9 must hunt down and kill Jack. A Tale of X-9 is one of the most artistically impressive episodes of Samurai Jack and features some of the best use of music and lighting in any cartoon. After following X-9 to his tragic conclusion, you can't help but feel sorry for the blue robot in his blue world, all fittingly underscored by the blues and jazz soundtrack. So at number 4 we have Jack Remembers the Past from Series 2 Episode 19. Now Samurai Jack is absolute chock-a-block full of pop culture references and this episode features one of my absolute favourites. Jack's wandering eventually takes him to his home only thousands of years in the future. In what is one of the more touching episodes of Samurai Jack, Jack spends the episode reminiscing about the good times of his youth. Told using flashbacks we get to see life before a coup including family and budding love, all serving to make Jack a more relatable character. During one of these flashbacks, young Jack approaches a bridge on which he sees a Ronin pushing a baby cart. The Ronin is then approached by four shadowy figures. Taking the baby out of harm's way, the Ronin then quickly dispatches of the four figures. This is actually a homage to one of my favourite films, Lone Wolf and Cub, Baby Cart at the River Styx. The whole episode is fantastic on its own merits, but this was a cherry on the cake for me. So at number three, we have Jack and the Spartans from series two, episode 12. Inspired by the real life battle of Thermopylae in which the 300 Spartans fought the Persian army and a little bit of a dash of uh, Frank, Miller, Frank Miller's 300, this is one of the most cinematic and epic episodes to date. Jack and the Spartans is an incredible rip roaring ride in which Jack stumbles upon Spartans battling a robot army only for them to return the next day to try to seize the Spartan lands. This episode has an incredible orchestral soundtrack which has ringings of the movie Gladiator. It also demonstrates some of the best action on the show. It has a real sense of spectacle and scale. Sorry Zack Snyder, but Samurai Jack did Frank Miller's 300 first, and no one will ever forget the 300 plus one. Okay, so this might be cheating, but technically my top two episodes are actually five episodes, but they both tell one story respectively. And also, this is my list, so deal with it. So at number two, we have The Birth of Evil, series three, episodes 37 to 38. This incredible two-parter details the birth of the shape-shifting master of darkness, Aku. It begins with three ancient gods, Odin, Ra, and Vishnu, battling a formless mass that threatens to destroy the universe. After a fierce battle, the gods think they've defeated Aku. However, a fragment of Aku crash lands on Earth, wiping out the dinosaurs. This fragment grows over the millennia, eventually infesting the lives of a feudal Japanese empire. This urges the emperor, Jack's father, to seek out and destroy the evil once and for all. However, he unwittingly resurrects Aku, beginning one of the most epic battles in Samurai Jack. Once again, these episodes barely feature our hero Jack. Instead, these episodes texture the world of Samurai Jack with lore and context. But for me, what made this episode especially great was the performance by the late, great Mako Iwamatsu as a coup. 
In this episode, Aku is shown as a terrifying and vengeful demon, rising from the earth as a towering monolith. Mako's performance is sensational, his crackling and thunderous voice is a marvel, breathing life into one of the best villains to ever grace the screen. Finally, as I said previously, Samurai Jack is no stranger to paying homage to films and pop culture. However, one of the biggest influences on Gendis' style for the show was a Japanese anime from 1963 called The Little Prince and the Eight-Headed Dragon. The film's art style, storytelling and design were a huge inspiration on the series and The Birth of Evil is a superb love letter to that film. Go check it out. So here we are at the coveted number one spot and you're going to think this is a little bit cliche but I rewatched the whole series and this makes the most sense. So at number one we have what's affectionately known as the premiere movie which is episodes one to three of Samurai Jack season one. The first episode takes place mostly in feudal Japan and the art style reflects this with some frames looking as though they could have been lifted from some ancient Japanese text. The episode begins with a solar eclipse and a huge monolith springing forth from the ground, Aku's favourite way to make an entrance. Aku then sets forth ravaging the nearby town. The people of the town revolt and the emperor fights Aku head on. A coup overpowers the Emperor and the Emperor's final orders are to send his son and future hero far away to train so that when he is ready they will bestow upon him the magical sword, the only weapon that can defeat a coup. The episode then goes through a montage of Jack's journey around the world, each stop reflecting the art and culture of the time and place, from learning hieroglyphs in ancient Egypt to Kung Fu in China. He returns as a man only to find his people and his father enslaved by a coup and boldly challenges a coup to a fight. As Jack is about to land the killer blow, a coup flings Jack far into the future, a future under the tyranny of a coup. Upon reaching the future, Jack doesn't take long to make an impression. He gets into a fight after mistakenly offending some alien dude. After beating them all with ease, he is approached by a talking dog. Yes, the show is weird as fuck. These dogs request Jack's help with defeating some of Aku's robot minions. It's also where our hero picks up his eponymous nickname. So episode 3 features Jack's first clash with the robotic forces of Aku as he slices his way through the army in an epic battle. And it is crazy violent as well. Aku's favourite weapon of choice is actually robotic killing machines. This meant the animators could get away with some pretty messed up stuff. But not for the use of oil instead of blood, we'd be talking Mortal Kombat levels of carnage. By the end of the episode, Jack is covered head to toe in oil. So there were many great episodes I could have chose from, but for me, the, the premiere movie, these first three episodes, sum up everything great about the show. Like I said earlier, it mashes those two art styles together and it makes them work and it, should, and it doesn't make sense. A, a samurai roaming around a neo-noir city and it all working it's just crazy and it and it's such a beautiful show and these episodes best reflect everything that's fantastic about samurai jack so if you want to get into the show there's no better place to start than the beginning do you agree with my top five do you disagree with my top five if so leave a comment below and don't forget to subscribe and for your fix keep it screen fiends